Hawaii is my home. For 78 years, I have lived here, watching its landscapes change and people come and go. But the appeal of the islands never wanes. My love for it never changes. The mountains, the flora, the creatures, the people. It's not just any one of these things that makes Hawaii so special. They are all part of its spirit. Here in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, we are living and thriving together. It's a place that gives us everything we need to be healthy and happy. My ancestors must have recognized this when they first saw the Hawaiian Islands over 1,000 years ago. Those ancient Polynesian voyagers sailing here from the south without a map, not even a compass to help them navigate. Instead, they sailed by, listening to the voice of the tides, feeling the embrace of the waves, and looking to the stars for guidance. From across the ocean, they came on double-hauled canoes, and by way of the ocean, they found their home, Hawaii. It's no wonder, then, that the ancient Hawaiian story of creation, called the Kumulipo, tells us that the sea is the womb from which all things were born. Starting in the darkness came creation. First, born was the coral polyp, then born was the coral. Beginning with this very small and simple organism, it goes on to list the order of creation, the birth order for all other creatures of increasing size and complexity all the way up to man. The story teaches us that corals are the very bases of life. The Kumulipo tells us that even the land was born out of the sea, growing from the dark depths, eventually emerging from the water and taking its island form. The two are intimately connected as a child to parents. Hanauka he Born is the octopus of the ocean, guarded by the alahe tree of the land. Born is the eel of the ocean, guarded by the milo tree of the land. Every creature born in the ocean has a partner, a guardian, a protector on land. And in return, the sea nurtures and feeds us. It's a lesson that man is just a small part of something much larger. We are dependent on other creatures, the land, and especially the sea, a source of life and sustenance. We are all family, and it is our responsibility to take care of each other. And from this comes the simple truth that if we care for the oceans, the oceans will take care of us. I was born far away from Hawaii, in one of the most diverse places on Earth, the small country of Ecuador in South America. I grew up listening to the birds of the Amazon rainforest, feeling the winds of the Andes, and marveling at the incredible landscapes in that part of the world. One of my most vivid childhood memories is visiting the Galapagos, and for the first time, experiencing an ecosystem that has seen very little human impacts. Even as a child, I noticed how different the animals were there. Much larger, more abundant, and not fearful of people. In fact, it seemed that animals were not afraid of me at all, but rather curious and intrigued by my presence. The appreciation for nature that had developed there later brought me to the Hawaiian Islands to study oceanography at the University of Hawaii. It was here that I first discovered diving as a way to explore places that were so close and yet so different. Looking onto the Honolulu skyline from offshore, I found that I could quickly escape into a completely different world 
by simply looking below the surface of the ocean. A world full of colorful fish and corals, all apparently unaware of the busy happenings of the city. My studies eventually took me to one of the most spectacular places on Earth, the reefs of the Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument. These protected waters contain some of the last untouched ecosystems on the planet, where life is still able to thrive in the absence of many of the human impacts that affect most of the world. It is only by observing ecosystems in pristine places like this and comparing them to more degraded ones that we are able to truly understand what we as humans are doing to this planet. I have now been working as a marine ecologist for the monument for over five years, helping to observe and better understand deepwater corals in the region. For a long time, people thought that life could not exist in the extreme environments of the deep sea. But we now know that life not only exists there, but thrives. Although the creatures of the deep sea are out of sight and out of mind for most, they are an essential part of Earth's ecosystems. They form the base of the food chain from which all other larger creatures rely for sustenance, even many of the seafoods that you and I enjoy so much. The deep ocean is still mostly unexplored and unknown, but though it is vast, Every day we're learning more about these deep water ecosystems. We may still be trying to piece together the complex relationships between the deep sea and the rest of life on Earth. But I do know one thing for certain, that if we take care of the oceans, the oceans will take care of us. I've spent many years of my life exploring the ocean's waters, both on and below the surface. Years ago, a fascination with this seemingly endless expanse brought my wife and I to leave everything behind and set sail on a five-year journey around the world. In our 40-foot sloop, we sailed everywhere, from New England to the Caribbean, Panama to the Galapagos, and Australia to Madagascar seeing incredible landscapes and experiencing many unfamiliar yet inviting cultures along the way. At one point, we found ourselves in the Southern Pacific, making port in New Zealand, a place we quickly fell in love with. By way of the ocean, we had found our new home. We've learned a lot about the native Maori culture during our time here, and certainly have an appreciation for the Polynesians who sailed the region for hundreds of years, using only their knowledge of the waves, the winds, and the stars. From New Zealand to Hawaii to Easter Island, no part of the Pacific seemed to be out of reach of those ancient explorers. Piloting deep sea vehicles is the closest that I may ever get to the true sense of discovery experienced by the Polynesian explorers of the past. As an engineer aboard NOAA's Okeanos Explorer, I'm lucky enough to see firsthand some of the last undocumented places on Earth. We sail to remote parts of the oceans to visit our planet's deepest canyons, widest valleys, and longest mountain ranges, all hidden from us at the bottom of the sea. With the help of the Deep Discoverer ROV, we're able to explore these isolated underwater environments some of which are still free of trash, showing no signs of human activity, a reminder of just how far from civilization we really are. I often find myself in awe of the abundance and diversity of life found in these places, miles below the water's surface, where intuition might lead us to believe life would be impossible. Deep sea creatures exist and thrive, seemingly separated from life above the surface. We are unaware of them, they are unaware of us. Yet we are all connected as parts of Earth's intricate biosphere. And now we find ourselves with the technological capability to understand how our ecosystems influence each other. So we aboard the Okeanos will continue to explore the unknown, illuminating the depths of the ocean 
for the rest of the world. With so much left to explore, it's my hope that young people are able to experience the oceans as I have. Perhaps then, they will come to understand the importance of this, that if we care for the oceans, the oceans will take care of us.